Welcome back, everybody, to the Weekly Source. Super excited to have you today and really excited for our guest today. We've got Stephanie Shields, SVP of Broker Sales at Affleck. Stephanie, welcome to the Source. You know, for the folks who haven't heard from you before or learned a bit about you, just tell us a bit about what you're doing at Affleck today. Yep, absolutely. So I have responsibility for broker sales and strategy at Aflac. And so really what that means is we partner with the broker and the consultant community. We deliver benefits to employers in all size segments. So from less than 100 to more than 100,000. And, you know, most people might think about us as this historical footprint in the voluntary or worksite market, but we've really been expanding. So this year, you know, we're very much focused on our historical voluntary footprint, but also life, disability, dental vision. And so really looking to expand to a full suite of non-medical solutions. Yeah, that's really great. And I think the evolution, even in certain cases from individual to group, I mean, we're seeing it continue to evolve uh, in the market today. But before we kind of get into, you know, what you guys are doing and, and how things have uh, adjusted, obviously, during the pandemic, you're managing a team that's national, I, I can imagine, right? Uh, yes. So talk a bit about just like your role, how it's evolved um, before we get into you know, some of the other stuff that's going on. Absolutely. Um, it's definitely fun managing a national team of salespeople remotely. Um, I'm certainly home more, that's for sure. Um, but all joking aside, you know, this is a relationship business. It is for everyone um, in, in, this, in this industry. So I think the entire industry had to pivot and adjust and think about how do we deliver the, you know, our message and how do we engage um, virtually. And so back in March, when travel restrictions went into place, you know, we huddled and we really thought about a couple different, you know, constituents with our, within our own team. How do we keep people engaged and connected through a um, virtual communication environment, but also our clients, our customers, and our brokers and technology partners? So. You know, we had um, a moment where we, we really looked at our strategy and thought about how do we deliver and how do we adjust. And there were a few key priorities that, that came to the surface. So the first one, and it was the almost, um, I would call it the immediate uh, need, was communication around how we are covering our customers this year. And so, you know, what benefits cover what conditions from testing to hospitalization? We got every question about furloughed employees and people out of work and what qualifies. And so we spent a lot of time putting together weekly communications to our brokers, our consultants, our technology partners, our clients, and our customers to make sure everyone was covered. And then we wanted to take a step back and say, how are all of our partners reacting? You know, this segmentation, some were small case focused, others were very large employer focused and everywhere in the middle. So we wanted to, to really understand almost at a relationship level, what's most important to help navigate through this time. And then ultimately what priorities need changing in 2020 as the world has changed a bit. And so we shifted some investments. We've accelerated some things that we were launching and working on and, and continue to communicate and roll those out. Um, overall, it has gone extremely smooth. You know, our operations went virtual, like many other companies and industries, our sales team, we had more finalist meetings this year. Um, conducted 100% virtually than in 2019. So there, we've we've managed through the change well. So um, that's really exciting. I, I like the idea of the personalized messaging too. Right, no two partners are the same. No two yeah. brokers, consultants are the same. Over on our side, we've got a reseller audience and a referral audience, and being able to just uh, get input and feedback from them specifically instead of kind of a message to the masses. So I, I think. Taking that now into when you look at Aflac as a whole uh, and some of your clients, the focus, I mean, what is top of mind and, and what has shifted before we started the recording? You mentioned something about, you know, the three pillars, right, that you guys have had your approach. Can you go into a bit more detail about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, so when we um, sort of thought about what is shifting and what the needs were this year, we looked at everything as in, in terms of these three pillars that emerged. The first one was product. So, um, you know, products have been in place for many years at the workplace, but maybe not thought of exactly as the way they were this year. So what questions we were getting and what really our customers wanted to know is, 
COVID testing, antibody testing, you know, comorbid conditions or other things that were complexities of COVID. But even if you didn't have COVID, what, what happens if you're furloughed or other things I mentioned earlier? So we took a look at our products and even shifted the way we communicate about them. So this open enrollment season, there's tweaks in our messaging. Um, we relaunched a bundled offering that provided really full end-to-end -end testing, hospitalization, um, diagnosis, conditions, that sort of thing, and, and an optional life rider into a, a new bundle approach that has gained a lot of traction. And I would want to also say that value-added services like telemedicine, financial wellness, you know, bill negotiation during medical events all have sort of come to the forefront. We've seen a lot more interest. So the product positioning, bundling, and services associated with it is has really been an important pillar for us. The second is technology. You know, technology is um, a core component of open enrollment season, but I don't know that in the past people really invested and by people, you know, employers or brokers invested the time to fully maximize all the tools that are available through third party platforms. So um, while platforms are the, the vehicle for enrollment, they offer so much in terms of engagement tools, decision support, education, videos. Um, you know, ongoing messaging and communication. So we have really tried to bring to the forefront some communications about leveraging or maximizing those capabilities. And then finally, um, enrollment, or I would say, how do we answer questions for employees when they are enrolling virtually? We've seen our call center utilization statistics um, triple this year. Uh, so between those three elements, um, we've seen a much more, a, a, a slightly different shift to open enrollment season this year. I would add one other thing though too, um, the claims process and ensuring that we are paying claims um, and communicating to our customers around what they're eligible for. We've embarked in a special open enrollment communication this year that we will deliver to our existing customers and new ones about reminding them. We are getting very proactive in reminders and communications to ensure people are filing claims and getting the most out of their benefits. I love the, you know, the, the claims piece, obviously major, right? And I think the other two things you uh, touched on, you know, we're not in an office where the open door policy of an HR professional where you can go ask questions, right, about your benefits is, is available. So um, no surprise that the telemedicine's up, right? The last thing you want is somebody to be stuck, uh, whether it's enrollment or about their benefits or, you know, getting a claim paid. So um, that, that's really cool. I think that's really interesting. Um, you know, before we wrap, I always like to end with a call to action or a final message. You know, you talk to the broker community just about every day, right? Um, you know, things are adjusting, moving virtual. I mean, what would you say is your message or, or call to action, I guess, to uh, the broker audience uh, that may be watching us? Yeah, it's, it's a really great question and the timing is perfect. So we are about to embark in open enrollment season. And once I had someone refer or compare to open enrollment, like getting taxes done, like you don't always fully understand what you need or how, what to select or how to file, but you look at what you did last year and you try and kind of keep consistent. And this is not the year to do that. And so my call to action is open enrollment season is upon us. And so what you enroll may be decided upon. The products might be in the process of being built out, but how you enroll is important. It's just as important as what's offered. So, you know, understand and leverage the technology available through your platform. Maximize all of the tools. Um, offer engagement options like call centers or other virtual, uh, you know, benefit counselor tools. And then communicate and educate. Spend the time and uh, try to drive a, an informed decision of our of employees this year in open enrollment. I love it. I think that's a great message, uh, Stephanie. Thank you so much for uh, for stopping by. Really valued the time and the messaging. Appreciate Affleck's partnership and all the things we're doing together with the Boost program and beyond. So. Uh, partnership goes a long way and, and you hopping on today goes a long way as well. Agree. We couldn't agree more. Um, Plan Source has been a fantastic partner and uh, we've seen a lot of success on our on our mutual clients. So thank you and thanks for having me. Always. And thanks so much everyone for tuning in and we will see you next week on the Weekly Source. Thanks.